Hello my dear friends, today we are going to learn about a very crucial Indian writer. His name is Mulkraj Anand who is extremely famous for his socialist viewpoint and this viewpoint is seen in almost all the work of this extremely great writer. Mulkraj Anand, he was born on 12th December 1905 and he died on 28th September 2004. Let's talk about the writer. He was an Indian writer in English. He was notable for his depiction of the lives of poorer castes in traditional Indian society. And he was one of the pioneers of Indo-Anglian fiction. We find him as an Indian based writer who was able to gain international readership along with R.K. Narayan, Ahmed Ali, and Raja Rao. Let's move ahead. If we talk about motivation for writing, we find Mulkraj Anand's literary career was launched by a family tragedy arising from the rigidity of India's caste system. His first prose essay was a response to the suicide of an aunt excommunicated by her family for sharing a meal with a Muslim woman. His first novel, Untouchable, published in 1935, is a chilling expose of the lives of India's untouchable caste. Let's talk about awards. He was awarded Sahitya Academy Award, Padma Bhushan Award and International Peace Prize for his notable work Kuli and Untouchables. Let's talk about literary contributions. In the year 1935, we received his novel Untouchable and Kuli was published in the year 1936. In 1937 we found Two Leaves and a Bud. In 1939 The Village was published and Across the Black Waters was published in the year 1939. Then The Sword and the Sickle in 1942 The Sword and the Sickle in 1942, it was published. My The Big Heart was published in the year 1945. The Lost Child, which is extremely famous. We have read this in junior classes as well. A miniature version we read in junior classes. This was published in the year 1934. Then Seven Summers. It was a memoir of Mulkraj Anand, which was published in the year 1951. Then we find... The Private Life of an Indian Prince. It was published in the year 1953. These are the 10 extremely important work of Mulkraj Anand. From this work, we get maximum questions in, examin in the examination. So let us discuss all his work one by one. Touchable. This was published in the year 1935. Untouchable is a novel by Mulkaraj Anand. The novel established Anand as one of India's leading English authors. We know that was the time when Hindi was prevalent in India. There were hardly anyone who understood English. But at that period of time also there were people, there were writers who were able to establish themselves. And one name is of Mulkaraj Anand. The book was inspired by his aunt's experience when she had a meal with a Muslim woman and was treated as an outcast by her family. This, talk, this talks about typical Indian family. Okay, let's move ahead. Untouchable. Here, the plot revolves around the argument for eradicating the caste system. Then... Uh, it is set in the North Indian government town, Bulandshahar. Untouchable is a day 
in the life of a young Indian sweeper whose name is Bakha. The son of Lakha, head of all of Bulasha's sweepers, Bakha is intelligent but naive, humble yet vain. Next important work is Kuli and the novel reinforced Anand's position as one of India's leading English author. The book is highly critical of British rule in India and India's caste system. The plot revolves around a 14-year-old boy, Munno, and his plight due to poverty and exploitation aided by the social and political structures in place. Anand he tries to break the traditional way of life in India. There was a movie in Bollywood which was made on this concept. Let's move to another work of Mulkraj Anand, which is extremely crucial. Two leaves and a bud. The topic is oppression of the poor. The story is about a peasant who tries to protect his daughter from a British soldier. This story is based on the tree plantation of Assam. Here in the story, the book was subsequently adapted to a Hindi film Rahi by Devanand and simultaneously released in English as The Wayfarer. It shows its popularity. Okay? The book depicts in detail the concept of haves and have-nots and the exploitation of one at the hands of the other in pre-independence India. It is not hidden from us that Britishers ruled India, but apart from Britishers, there were elite people in India, Indian elite people who exploited poor strata of society excessively okay instead of trying to uplift the life of the indians they try to exploit and there lies the problem outsider of course they have looted us but even our own fellow members did not leave us there lies the tragedy in indian history okay there is a dramatic novel Sorry, this is a dramatic novel that ends with a tragic clash of interests and destinies. Here, the protagonist is Gangu, who is middle-aged peasant living in Hoshiarpur with his wife Sajni and daughter Leila and his son Budhu. Because of his outstanding debts, he ends up losing his land and as such, readily agrees to travel to Assam to take on a plantation job. That would pay well and allow Gangu to own his own land. This was proposed by the owner. However, upon his arrival, Gangu finds that this was all a trick and that the job is essentially slave labor. Friends, this shows plight of poor people to better their lives, but further they enslave themselves. Let's further discuss about the novel. Their pay is not even enough to buy food, and many of the merchants offer loans with interest rates so high that repayment is impossible. Gangu and his family are forced to live their life lives in squalor and to endure all sorts of abuse and degradation. On the top of this, Sajini and Leila are subjected to rape and other sexual degradation. This was the tragedy of India. Poor people always are subjected to this kind of oppression. It should be changed. Now we are educated, so this should be changed at earliest. Let's move to Another work of Mulkraj Anand that is The Village. The book was the first of a trilogy that include, included Across the Black Waters and The Sword and the Sickle. 
The plot centers on India's political structure, specifically the British rule and the independence movement. The novel revolves around Lal Singh, a peasant in the Punjab, his antics going against social norms while in the village, his subsequent enrollment in the army and his troubles in the army, culminating in his return to the village. In his next work, Across the Black Waters, we find he describes the experience of Lalu, a sepoy in the Indian army fighting on behalf of Britain. It describes the experience of Lalu, a sepoy in India, in Indian army fighting on behalf of Britain. The Germans in France during World War I. This sepoy was fighting in favor of Britishers against German during World War I. He is portrayed by the author as an innocent peasant whose poor family was evicted from their land and who only vaguely understands that the war is about to begin. The book has been described as Anand's best work since The Untouchable. In, Lalu, in Lalu's tragedy lied the tragedy of the Indian village and Anand dramatizes a poignant truth to dispose any one of land is to deny him an identity. Vasavaraj Naikar The book is part of a trilogy along with the village and the sword and the sickle that chronicles the life of Lalu as he struggles to rise from the bottom of Indian society. In the background is India's fight for independence. The book is the only Indian English novel that is set in World War I and portrays the experience of Lalu who only wants to reclaim the piece of land his family lost as a reward for serving. But when he returns from war, he finds, but when he returns from war, he finds his family destroyed and his parents dead. The novel's larger theme are that of war and death. Lalu encounters Western culture. The Sword and the Sickle Like his other novels, in this also, with the topic, this topic also deals with social and political structures, specifically the rise of communism. The title for the book was given to Anand by George Onwell. The novel was in keeping with British and American writers of the time. The book was the final part of trilogy that included the village and across the black waters. The Big Heart The theme of the novel is the conflict between hereditary coppersmith and the capitalists. It is a novel about a village of artisans in Amritsar district in the early 1940s whose livelihood is destroyed by the establishment of a factory producing copper utensils. The story of the novel takes place in Amritsar town. The man with a big heart, Ananta, who has had the experience of participating in the Gandhian struggle for freedom in Bombay, arrives in Amritsar. By this time, the situation in Amritsar is already explosive and chaotic. It becomes more intensive and violating with Ananta's arrival in the town. The cause behind all this is that two Chaudhuris, Muralidhar and Gokul, Chand set up a factory which has rendered the local coppersmiths jobless and hopeless. Though Ananta supports the cause of the 
coppersmiths he has faith in the power of modernity and efficiency of machines ananta while coming from bombay accompanies a woman janaki and keeps her as his mistress but she is slowly dying of tuberculosis there is another character satyapal puran bhagat and ralia all play their role in the struggle against the capitalists in their own way ananta ananta's gandian approaches are unwelcomed ralia in his utter madness kills ananta hitting his head against a machine repeatedly the story ends with the machine emerging the winner over human eighth work of eighth work of mulkraj anand eighth work of mulkraj anand in this collection is the lost child which is extremely important it is a collection of 13 stories short stories this collection was first printed in 1934 making it amongst the earliest works anand has illustrated a philosophical topic through a simple tales most of the stories are set in rural india and kids are the protagonist in the most of the fables indian characters and local setting are trademark of anand and he has followed this tradition this time too characters like chandu in the barber's trade union are easy to relate to in the first story the lost child anand tries to explore the subconscious mind of a child he has narrated the tale of a child who visits the festival of a spring with his parents the child is irresistibly drawn towards toys the garland of gulmohar and delicious gulab jamuns but his parents resist from buying anything for him friends when we see use of gulab jamun gulmohar uh, these are indian language okay this kind of language is called english okay which is implemented by salman rusdi in indian writings all right this makes us so close to us okay indianness is revealed when writer uses these kind of local local words all right let's move ahead seventh work is seven so, sorry ninth work is seven summers a memoir which was published in 1951 this is his autobiography seven summers first drafted when mulkraj anand was a student in london university but not published till 1951 recreates the events and feelings of the first seven years of the writer's life or he called the his half unconscious and half conscious childhood the child wants to play climb trees catch the dragon dragonflies butterflies but again his parents won't let him do any of this later towards the dawn towards the dawn later towards the dawn the child gets lost in the crowd and a gentleman lends a helping hand to him this gentleman offers goodies and pony ride to order in order to console the child but the child will have none of them instead he longs for longs to meet instead he longs to meet his parents the story is aptly titled the lost child since this kid is actually lost in materialistic world first of the seven volumes of autobiographical fiction that anand conceptualized but ev- but never completed this book is full of memorable scenes and people observed through the eyes of a child the most impressive of them all being the coronation darbar in delhi to which our young hero is smuggled wrapped in a blanket so that the sahibs 
might not object to the presence of so discordant an element into so gorgeous a ceremony. This edition of Seven Summers is a special reissue of the classic autobiography to commemorate Anand's birth centenary. Last work in our list is The Private Life of an Indian Prince, which was published in the year 1953 after independence. The book is classified as one of Anand's most impressive and important works in keeping with his other writings dealing with the topic of social and political reform. This book deals with the abolition of princely states state system in India. While the novel is not an autobiography, like many of his earlier novels, it follows an autobiographical tone. Thank you, friends, for being with us. I hope this is going to help you out in upcoming examination. Do wait for our another video at 7.30 p.m. every day. Thank you so much and all the best for your examination.